Hi, this is Kelly Hill, technology reporter for RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Lonnie Schilling, who is CEO of BirdStep. And uh, Lonnie, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about um, continuity experience mm -hmm. in Wi-Fi offload and why that's important um, and how you see the challenges in that area. It's an excellent question, actually. Experience continuity is the result of a lot of work we've been doing with customers in our customers setting expectations on what they need from our technology in order to deliver a, a, a value service to their customers. So experience continuity, the notion is relatively simple. If you were to assume that um, uh, the operator is providing a head net service to their customers comprised of a, uh, a cellular and a Wi-Fi circuit. And what we do is we manage the consumer experience when using that head net. Now, if I'm using cellular at any given point in time, and the business logic that is handed down to our, our software on the handset in the form of rules would dictate that the service should move from cellular to Wi-Fi based on application type being run, location, time of day, or quality of the network that we're measuring. We ensure that when that handoff occurs, it only occurs when the new service, in this case Wi-Fi, is capable of supporting that application that service level. The way we look at it is that there's got to be a level of continuity in the service experience when you move from one bearer to the next. If we as consumers use that and we're moving back and forth between these bearers frequently, if I do not sense any degradation in the service level, well only then are we doing our jobs. Um, so, what do you, so what would you describe as the challenges of Wi-Fi offload and, and how BirdStep addresses those? Uh, it's, that's an interesting question and, and this is why. You said specifically Wi-Fi offload. I'm of the belief that offload is not a proposition, it's not a solution, it's a use case. Um, and what I mean by that is in, in North America, we started very early in this process of working with operators to use Wi-Fi to very selectively and very intelligently move data, not wholesale as other solutions would, but very selectively and intelligently move data from cellular to Wi-Fi when business logic from, coming from our policy server indicated that that application should indeed be moved. Other solutions, it was all about wholesale offload from cellular to Wi-Fi, whether the Wi-Fi was reliable, whether that application would benefit from doing so or not. So we were very, very selective in doing so. Now, offload is a use case in such that we have a platform, an architecture, that enables an operator to deploy our technology in that fashion. We can achieve that, that use case. We can go much further beyond that, though, and the industry has as well, and quite frankly, in North America, it continues to be an issue, continues to be a use case, in order to save money on, on the, the spectrum necessary for the cellular infrastructure. Um, we are advancing in North America. It's certainly getting to a point where, where they're looking at how to monetize this technology. Now, you go outside of North America, Europe and Asia, they look at the use of Wi-Fi completely different. And there, it is much more an issue of, of different use cases. Europe, for example, they don't have contention issues on their 3G and the new 4G network. So to, to, to take that value proposition of offload to a European operator makes no sense because they, don't, they, have contention on, they do not have contention on the networks. There, it's much more of an issue of what we, control, we, we call control and visibility. In other words, um, not providing a Wi-Fi, managed Wi-Fi service, as consumers would, on their own, move to a Wi-Fi service, often international roaming, the cost of tariffs for, for cellular in a data roaming scenario would encourage and compel me as a consumer to move to Wi-Fi when I could, but when I do that, the operator loses visibility of that, of that consumer and control of the, the, the experience that, that that consumer has. So therein, our technology brings that back. We have analytics embedded into the technology that allows the operator to see the consumer, understand where they are 
and to measure their, their experience level or their quality of experience. And through the control aspects, we can set business logic and rules on the handset through our policy servers to instruct that end device on how to react. Asia, completely different uh, market from there as well, but the point is, is that all the markets are different and that you need a platform that's flexible enough and an architecture that allows you to, to support, enable, and create completely new sets of, of use cases here above, you know, just basic offload to save money, but how do you monetize? Um, so, Lonnie, what do you see as the major influencers for Wi-Fi in the next few years? That's a very good question, as a matter of fact, and, and it's evolving very quickly. Um, we look at it this way, and it's the technologist in us, but, you know, if, if you kind of look at the notion of, you know, at the very lowest layer, what we call the bearer level, you have your cellular bearer and you have your Wi-Fi bearer, and this is something we've been doing for a long time, and we understand that piece of the architecture very, very well. And you go a level beyond that, it's what we call the control layer. The control layer is the ability to take business logic from the operator and to articulate that in a set of rules on the handset that tell that handset how to react in, 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 in view of you know, a cellular service and a Wi-Fi service. Well, which one do I use? When do I use it? Why and how? So this is something we do very, very well, and we've been doing this for a lot of years with our customers. The next layer, though, and this is where we're going to, I believe, is that what we call the services layer. And everything below is really about enablement, bearer and control that enables. At the services layer, when you begin to extend the service management layer to the end device, it becomes very important, and here's why. You know, up to a few years ago, mobility, the application for a mobile network was mobility, and it was good. The value proposition to me as a consumer was delivered through applications and value embedded in the network, SMS, MMS, telephony. You know, we flash forward to today, the application's still mobility, but the value I have no longer resides in the network. It resides on this device, and it's called an app. The problem for the mobile operators are no longer in that value chain. So how do you create this new service layer to bring the operator back into the value proposition of the customer in controlling, tariffing, monitoring, and deploying new apps and services. You extend that all the way down to the handset. And I think that's going to be a fundamental change. We're hearing noise. Um, we're getting ready to demo products. Um, so I think that's going to be a major area over the next you know, two, three years in, in, in the entire evolution of Wi-Fi. Great. Uh, well, we're here at Super Mobility Week. And I'm wondering if you have any observations from your time here at the show so far uh, on things that you think are interesting. You know, absolutely. Um, there is one thing that's really caught my attention, and this is something that we're putting some energy into, quite a bit of energy, as a matter of fact. And, you know, we've seen how the mobile operators have recently begun to adopt uh, Wi-Fi as, you know, if not strategic, certainly more integral to their service offering to the consumers. You know, we've certainly seen how enterprises have adopted the technology and how service providers are providing this as a managed service pro proposition. We've seen retails take a hold of this and industry take a hold of this. The newest uh, market segment that we've seen really begin to grasp this in a, in a very strong way is, is IoT as a whole, but more specifically, the connected car. And there's a lot of that going on here. And this is something that we fundamentally believe that Hetnets are going to be instrumental in the success of the connected car industry. And it has to do with economics. Um, you know, a car is not always mobile. A car, and it's been measured up to 92% of the time, is parked, um, which means it's very nomadic. So in a nomadic sense, when I've got it parked in my garage or my place of work or, you know, in the retail store where Wi-Fi is prevalent, why, first, why would I need, or why would I want to use cellular? And the big question is, who's going to pay for it? Now, when I've got the presence of all that Wi-Fi, why not use it? So that's something we've been seeing here. It's something we advocate, quite frankly. And uh, we see a big play for HetNets, both Wi-Fi and cellular, in the vehicle, and the necessity to manage that customer experience in that type of environment. Because, A, it's got to be, you never want to say cheap or free, but it's got to be cost efficient to the consumer. But more importantly, the experience, the, cons the consumer experience has to be positive. Otherwise, it'll ne never take off. 
I like what I'm hearing and seeing here at the show on that. Great. Well, I've been talking with Lonnie Schilling, CEO of BirdStep. Lonnie, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you.